Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. In this segment, we're going to be having a conversation with Dr. Ayman Al-Hendi. He's joining us on the program to talk about the recent FDA approval of a non-surgical oral medication option for premenopausal women to manage heavy bleeding due to uterine fibroids. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Ayman Al-Hendi. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Neil. It's good to be with you. Well, um, what is it uh, that you do and and where is it that you practice? Uh, I am a gynecologist and many, many invasive surgeon, uh, also professor of gynecology and head of research uh, here in Chicago at the University of Illinois, Chicago. Now, we're we're talking today about this uh, recent FDA approval of this non-surgical oral medication option for premenopausal women, of course, to to manage this heavy bleeding uh, caused by uterine fibroids. First off, what causes them? Oh, that's a very good question. And that's actually a major part of my research also. Beside my clinical practice, I'm active in research. And most of my research is funded by NIH. So uh, it's, it's, we don't have a very uh, good understanding of how fibroids start. Uh, we know they are more common in women of color. So they are about four times more in, in black women, about two times more in Hispanic women compared to white women. Uh, we know they are associated, for example, with increased body weight. We know they tend to run in families. We know some nutritional factors could be contributing. Uh, For example, uh, deficiency of vitamin D seems to be a contributing factor to increase the risk. Uh, But I think there's still a lot that we need to know, and that's why we need more research in this area. How do they present? Right. Uh, So so fibroids, as you mentioned earlier, they are uh, tumors, but they are benign tumors. They are not cancer and have nothing to do with cancer. Uh, and they happen on the wall of the uterus. So the typical way they present is by causing women to have heavy menstrual bleeding. So the typical scenario I see in my patient, and most of my practice actually is caring for women uh, with uterine fibroids, especially women of color, because of the location of my practice, uh, is uh, they say, okay, my periods were like clockwork every four weeks, and I know I get, you know, three, four days of, of heavy bleeding and then a couple of days of minimal bleeding and then it's over. But then in the last, you know, few months, sometimes few years, uh, my uh, bleeding has changed dramatically. Either it become very heavy, still regular, but it's very heavy uh, or actually become also uh, irregular all over the place. Some, some of my patients say, I'm bleeding nonstop, or some say I have like three periods per month, meaning they bleed, then they have a couple of days off, and then they bleed again. So the most common presenting symptom is heavy menstrual bleeding. This recent approval by the FDA, it's a non-surgical option. Historically, are are these fibroids surgically dealt with? Uh, Is it an option? Do they have to become severe? Absolutely. So by far, the, the, the most commonly uh, used method to treat fibroids at the moment is surgery. Mm-hmm. And, and it's actually quite an invasive surgery. So it's typically in the form of hysterectomy, which of course, as, as you know, and your audience know, is removing the uterus. So basically, we remove the uterus with the fibroid in it. So in, in this country, in the United States, we do about 600,000 hysterectomies every year. It is the second most common surgery after cesarean section. So, so we're, I feel really, in my opinion, we're doing too many hysterectomies. Uh, the other surgical option also we do is myomectomy, uh, which as, as you know, is just removing the fibroid and keeping the uterus in place. Uh, we usually do this in women who uh, have severe fibroid, but still wants to attempt to get pregnant so they haven't uh, started or haven't completed their family. But by far, hysterectomy is the more common surgery we do for fibroids. Um, and that's because until now, uh, we didn't have actually good medical treatment options for fibroids. But now the FDA has approved this non-surgical. It's, a, it's an oral uh, medication. Is it, is it a pill? How does this um, work? What is it called uh, first? How does it work? And, and what do you think that it means for the future of women who are dealing with uh, this heavy premenopausal uh, uterine fibroid bleeding? Exactly. Yeah, this is exciting time uh, because this is the first FDA-approved non-surgical treatment for fibroid. Uh, you're absolutely right. It is oral. 
and it's twice a day. It's a pill that the patient can take in the you know convenience and comfort of their home uh, twice a day. And and uh, you know as as we kind of mentioned, the, the reason this is significant is. Uh, now we actually could have a, a medication that we can prescribe uh, in a kind of simple way, and and the patient can take it and and get a, a relief of their heavy menstrual bleeding. Um, so it's called Orient. That's the uh, the commercial name, uh, and and the the chemical name or the active ingredient is called Elagolic. But Orient actually is Elagolic and uh, add back therapy. So it's illagolic and a little bit of estrogen and a little bit of progesterone. So fibroid basically to grow, they really need the hormones coming from the ovary. They need the estrogen and the progesterone that comes from the ovary, uh, of course, every month and so on. And, and they, this is their lifeline. And that's how fibroid cells and fibroid tumor continue to grow and cause you know, more heavy bleeding and so on. So the way Elagolics works is uh, uh, works by suppressing or shutting down, if you wish, the, the ovary temporarily. So as long as you're having, uh, taking the Elagolics or the Orient, you will have no ovarian activity. So, so we are depriving the fibroid from their lifeline, from the estrogen and progesterone. However, so, so that's, of course, very good to achieve the, the desirable outcome, which is treating the heavy menstrual bleeding uh, associated with fibroids. But of course, estrogen particularly also have other useful functions in the rest of the body. For example, it's important for the health of the bone. Also, if you take estrogen away, um, the patient would have some uh, estrogen withdrawal symptoms like hot flashes and night sweats, that kind of typical menopausal symptom. So of course, that's not a good thing to have. So, so that's how we formulated uh, Orien, which has the active ingredients, illegolics, but then a minimal amount of estrogen and progesterone so that we can avoid the side effect of, you know, uh, taking away the estrogen and also maintain bone health, but without allowing the fibroid to grow. And that's why Orien is, is really kind of an exciting uh, option because it has the efficacy while avoiding the potential side effects of taking away the estrogen. So, Doctor, where can our listeners go and uh, get some more information about Orion? Um, uh, so, uh, to get more information about Orion, we published uh, the data from our phase three studies uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine. It came out in the January issue. So, I think that's, that's a very good uh, resource to get um, full details of the phase three study and all the supplemental information. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.